Wednesday, July 7th, 2010. Well, we had a very good day out. He played well into the night until around 10.30 when I begged him to go to bed because I was beat. Most of the night was spent playing with Nick's new airbender toys and Nick wanting to show off his new martial arts skills. Sadly, only about a month or so after Nick told me he wanted to drop the Nick part of his name and just go by Batman, he has now instructed me that he is now to be called the last airbender. Not exactly catchy. Don't know how long this will last, but I have to say I am in love with this little man with so much personality and wit. Tomorrow will be bittersweet. Nick will start on his chemo regimen. The procedure I have been praying for all these years will now become a reality. I hope and pray it will be miraculous, but I cannot help but feel sad for what Nick will have to endure. All the poisons, the nausea, the being locked up like a prisoner, lack of contact, the fear of the unknown is there too. Still, we press on in hope and faith through him with Nick's courage and strength to get us through in your prayers. Thursday, July 8th, 2010. The chemo has been running for almost two hours. One more hour of chemo. There's two different kinds, and then a break, and then more. We played the last airbender earlier, and Nick is hanging tough so far. Not that I would expect any differently from him. It's me who is trying not to be a mess. Friday, July 9th, 2010. Yesterday, Nick got at least eight hours of chemo. Poor kid looked so out of sorts and was completely agitated until I finally asked for a dose of lorazepam to take the edge off for him. Of course, Nick did not complain once, and every time I asked him how he was feeling and if he was okay, he shouted back, I'm good. Stop talking, Mom. Monday, July 12, 2010. We are swiftly approaching day minus one. I cannot sleep, so I am forced to think and pray and weep. Wednesday, July 14, 2010. Day zero is here. Nick is to get his bone marrow transplant at 2 p.m., which is 15 minutes from now. Everything is going so fast. I barely have time to breathe, but I am so excited and teary-eyed to think we have finally arrived. To think of the future possibilities for Nick's life and the hopes and dreams that Nick may now be able to realize. Please hold him up and pray for him for a new healthy immune system, for the new cells to graft, for all good things. And please pray for protection against graft-versus-host disease, neurological damage, complications, etc., etc. From the deepest recesses of my heart, I thank you for being on this journey with us and for praying for my precious son, Nick. Today, Nick will have his second birthday, and we rejoice that this day has come. Nick and I have had recent discussions in great length, and if I haven't mentioned it before, Nick is going to be rebirthed today, and according to Nick, he will be Batman going into the transplant, but will emerge as Aang, the last airbender. Saturday, July 17th, 2010. Day plus three. Wow. So many people, both professionals and parents alike, told me that the bone marrow transplant procedure was so uneventful and anticlimactic. I understood, after all, that basically it was like a blood transfusion done in the room, except it was pushed manually into his line instead of by a machine. The event was so much more than that. It felt completely powerful. The donor cells come in a bag, which they routinely ask the patient to name. Nick, also known as Aang, and formerly known as Batman, aptly named the bag the Blue Spirit, which comes from the Airbender movie. The push started exactly at 2.17 p.m. and ended at 3.05. 
My daughters, Mariah and Kristen, were in the room along with my girlfriend, Michelle, and her special needs nurses, Carrie and Gwen. During most of the procedure, I had spring from Vivaldi's Four Seasons plane. When the procedure was close to done, Michelle played Aang's song from the series, followed by a song from Third Day, and then lastly, at the very end, our theme song by Mark W. Schultz, titled He's My Son. When the procedure first started, Nick was still full of energy, even after a very long, playful session of sword fighting with the pastors. What I wasn't expecting was this huge temper tantrum that seemingly came out of nowhere. Nick screamed and ordered Carrie and Gwen out of the room, not once, but twice. The tantrum was big, but as fast as it came on, it was gone, just like that, and then Nick was out, without sedation or anything. Nick lay asleep with his eyes partially open. To me, it seemed like Nick went to sleep truly as Batman and Nick, and then had a catharsis. He slept through the whole rest of the procedure and then sat up five minutes after like he was wide awake and then went back down for a little while. Michelle and I wept quietly through the entire procedure. It's as if you could feel something or someone. Was it God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit? It felt like they were in the room with us. The room felt alive, a rebirth. At least, that's how I felt. Afterward, I truly felt like I needed to be debriefed or I needed to decompress. About an hour after the BMT ended, my husband Sean and my daughter Leilani arrived. Nick was wide awake and full of himself and ready to go another 50 rounds with his sister. More punching, martial arts, and sword fighting. He even gave one of his sisters a bloody nose. This from a boy who just had seven days of intense chemotherapy and ATG conditioning and a bone marrow transplant. Have a great weekend and enjoy the simple pleasures life has to offer. Love on one another. In love and hope, Amy Lynn and Aang.